Hey y'all, it's Laura and welcome back to my go-to design series where we're going through each and every one of my go-to designs that I create foundations for my pages with. If you'd like to see the very first one explaining this whole series, I will link that at the very end of the video so that you can get caught up. There will be about 15 videos in this series and they'll be up every single Saturday for the next couple of months. So let's head over to the desk and see which go-to design we're doing today. For our very last go-to design, this is the Four Corners. This is a relatively new one for me. I've done about four of these so far in the last year or so. And so it's kind of an up and coming go-to design you're probably going to see more of. And it's a great option at the end of a collection or the end of a kit if you have a lot of embellishments, but not a lot of paper. This is a great design for that scenario. In this case, I was finishing off a older Coco Vanilla Studio boy collection and had a lot of these large robot pieces that I really wanted to get used. I also had a lot of these kind of random mustaches and tickets, things like that, that I really wanted to see how could I get them onto a page without it looking too busy and too cluttered. So I have two photos in the center and generally when I do this design, I do put my photos in the center with white space around the outside and then the heavy embellishing is out here at the corners. Now when I create these corner clusters, I tend to work in an L shape and I try to mix in a lot of different colors. So I have a little bit of the teal here and here and here and here. I have some of this orange here and here here and here. So you see I'm spreading out the color so that each quadrant has a little bit of each color. Now, following this similar idea, here's another layout that uses the four corner design, but in a slightly different way. So with this particular layout, I've, instead of going for super L-shaped, some of them are, this one is fairly L-shaped. This one really isn't, it's more of a cluster and has some larger pieces instead of a big grouping of smaller pieces. I also switched it up with my photos. So I have a four by six and a three by four. So two different shaped photos and sized photos, not shapes, sized photos, and then a journaling spot off to the side. How much uh, additional embellishing you do in the center, it's really up to you. This particular layout was created so that I could use some flair, which I knew would be very dimensional. So I also popped up these two figures onto foam. Since I was already gonna be adding bulk to this layout, I decided to go all out and add bulk everywhere. So it's pretty evenly bulky across the page. Now, I have found <laughs> that I tend to lean towards my Coco Vanilla stash when I do this design. So it will not surprise you, I think, to discover, here's another one <laughs> using my Coco Vanilla Stash. And what's funny is all three of these layouts that I did for my boy photos use different Coco Vanilla collections. So three different Coco Vanilla boy collections represented with this style, which is very funny to me. And I'm not sure why it's these collections that draw me to this, but they do. So this is a little different take. I've gone with a thinner border this time. As you saw, the last two had a large thick border and even a double border. Both of these had a double border. A little bit of picture in picture sort of action happening there. This has the thinner border and the much smaller, much more diminutive corner clusters. Now the reason I did that on this layout is because I have three photos in the center and I knew this particular piece was going to take up a lot more space on the page. So I made sure to miniaturize my corner clusters to give this ample space for that nice open white area around the outside. One of the things that I really love about this particular design is that you can mix and match the different type of embellishments you use on it. And as long as you kind of balance them out, so have wood veneer on either side here, we have stars here, we have uh, big circles at each, each one has a circle. So as long as you're balancing out 
your shapes and your uh, embellishment types, it works. Uh, balancing out colors, types of embellishments, shapes, all of those things, it doesn't matter what else you add to it. As long as you have some sort of balance, it works. Now, this one I had used some washi tape to create banners hanging down, so it's a little bit more subtle than on the first two, and it, my L's don't go out quite as far. So this one doesn't have as many embellishments on it either as the other two did. So you can definitely make this your own, customize it to the embellishments you have. It doesn't have to be big L's, it can be small L's, it can be just a tiny little cluster in the corner, whatever you like. The center photos, this one I've layered heavily behind it with paper, Whereas some of the other layouts, I just put embellishments behind it. So this is just the paper layering, no embellishments on the photos at all. So I think that that's a good option to show you another way to use this design. Now for my last version, I decided we needed to see a feminine version and a version that did not contain Cocoa Vanilla Studio <laughs> products. Just so you can see that you really can use whatever you like. Now we did this one on a live a couple of weeks ago and it was using my August stash kit. So you will see this pop up in the upcoming reveal of all the layouts that I did for the month at the end of August. And I really enjoyed this one. So I wanted to do something a little bit different here. I still went with my L shapes here, here, and here, but I, I brought my clustering into the center so it wasn't quite such a defined L. So there's more clustering here in the center. Using florals was a great choice for that. And then in my center cluster, I did a mix of the paper layering and the embellishments. And that was really fun. I started out with this tag here and eventually added this second tag just to balance it out. The same with these little circles, the top and bottom. I've added them here to balance things out. And that's really the name of the game with this style, is finding balance. It's a great opportunity to practice balance on your layouts. So we're looking at these two. You'll notice these two embellishment clusters are a little bit more diminutive or smaller than these two clusters. They don't have quite as much going on. They both have a speech bubble defining the shape here in the background, as well as a little titling piece and a floral. Behind that, there's just some bits and pieces and banners. So these are very similar styles. You can just repeat across the layout. Up here, these two have big cameras mixed in to their clustering, and they have banners, they have florals, they have titles. So you can just repeat your clustering types across the layout diagonally, and it adds a lot of interest to the page without feeling too repetitive. So that is it for my go-to designs, but I do have a little bonus for you. I had a lot of people request a PDF guide to the go-to designs, and so I have created that for you when I had some extra time. I know, what extra time, Laura? <laughs> I found it. But I really wanted this to be concise and brief. I wanted this to be something that you could quickly look at and go right the vertical, right the horizontal, and quickly see three options for using that design. So I didn't put all of the layouts that I put in the videos onto this page. I just wanted to give you a quick glance. Yeah, let's do that one. But I also made sure that the layouts that I chose are very different versions of that design with a very brief explanation. So we have three pages front and back. Actually, it's two pages front and back and one one-sided, so five pages total. And I would recommend printing these in color if you can. And I do have my YouTube channel and my blog here at the bottom, just so that if you want to see the rest of the examples, you can quickly go to the YouTube channel, find the playlist, and find whichever go-to design you need in case you want more ideas. But I thought this was a great way to add to your inspiration albums or binders if you have them, or you can just honestly staple these guys together, keep them on your desk, and when you just need a quick, what do I wanna to make today? Scrap lift one, 
pick a design and go for it. I really encourage you to do that. I will go ahead and put the link to this downloadable PDF. It is completely free. And I will add that to the, both the description of the video and the pinned comment if YouTube will allow me to. Sometimes it lets me post links, sometimes it does not. So I will send you a link to my blog where you'll be able to download the PDF for free. And hopefully that will be helpful to you guys. I'm so thankful that you've been enjoying my go-to series. This has been such a fun series to do. I've enjoyed talking design with all of you. As always, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you have any requests for videos you would like to see or new series coming up, I would love to hear that too. And just add it to the comments below. That's it for me, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this one. And until next time, bye.